All right, so today we're going to talk about one of the really important things that it comes to uh, vintage electronics and either buying or selling, and that's packing and shipping. And look, I know before you jump off the video real quickly and say, hey, I don't really want to watch a very long video talking about packing and shipping, uh, what I want to show to you today is, again, we're going to go through, I want to show you some tips on a recent packing job I did on the 1943 MD Sony PVM, which was a very large PVM monitor. And then I also had one shipped to me within the last few months, and that was also 20 inch. So today I want to talk about specifically bigger monitors. I'm going to show you some do's, don'ts. And so you're going to have on the front end, you're going to have a, me packing a PVM. And then on the back end of the video, the second half, we'll be going specifically looking at a very poorly done packing job. But I've got to be honest with you, you know, there's so many different reasons as to why you may end up needing to pack your monitor <clears throat> could be maybe you just have to move somewhere and you need to pack it up or store it and then you might even be do something drastic like even shipping a monitor for either having it serviced like i've honestly got a lot of people who do request that i service their crts so this will be helpful for you know you if you want to pack your pvm or crt and ship it to my location or if you end up wanting to eventually sell, I mean, I know times can be tough right now. So if you need to sell your PVM or if you even are interested in maybe buying one from eBay or something, maybe this will help uh, people understand a little bit more about the packing procedure, what's important, maybe what's not. And then again, we'll look at some bad things that have uh, been done that I've had to deal with. So we're going to start here and I'm going to go ahead and pull myself out of the picture and I want to show you this recent packing job I did on this 1943 MD. Now to make this video uh, speed up a little bit, I am going to fast forward a lot through this and kind of walk you through the majority of this packing job here and uh, go through what's important. So the first thing I want you to know is I'm starting with some saran wrap. Uh, also, just so you know, I want to mention that I will be going through, you know, breaking down the pricing on how much it costs me to properly pack this, because this kind of packing job should be able to be done if you live near a Lowe's or in a Walmart, you'll be able to get this kind of packing done. So first off, when I started back here at the beginning, you'll notice uh, it's actually covered in saran wrap, and that's not even high-end, high-quality saran wrap. That is your $1 Kroger brand or store brand saran wrap and I could put a, put a good wrap around the outside of the monitor to begin with and then I'll load in the front area and screen area and kind of flatten that out and then I'll use the first bubble wrap which these are three quarter inch I believe or no they're they're really tiny but they're the bigger rolls you get I think 300 square foot for a roll or something but those rolls generally cost me about 16 to 17 dollars per roll so right away, we're going to add that around there. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to even up the areas where the buttons were in front of this monitor because that's a really big area that gets damaged. Now, on this monitor, there were the buttons were actually screwed in really easily, and you could remove them for those tabs on the side. But if you try to ship something that has a plastic tabs on the side, it's very difficult to remove those. So I always recommend extra packing around the corners and bottoms of these monitors, especially that button area too. Anywhere in that control panel, you want to make sure it's properly packed. So one of the things I like to use are pool noodles. And since it's April, they are selling pool noodles again. And if you go to like Walmart, these smaller pool noodles, you can get them for a dollar a piece. And so I wound up using three of those pool noodles. So that's another $3. And they will um, give you a nice sturdy cushion on some of those you know more delicate areas i also like to do it around the corners and kind of build almost a framed cage around certain areas of the monitor which you'll see me do now especially that front screen and again so it's a combination of using just the saran wrap the bubble wrap and then of course these lovely pool noodles so uh, you got to kind of be a little resourceful when you're packing these things because uh, you can get overwhelmed and um, uh, overpack it. But also, unfortunately, you'll see this later, a lot of people do not. I mean, most of the time, people don't pack it this well. And I buy a lot of PVMs off eBay, 
and they are not ever packed this well, to be honest with you. Most of the time, they're packed relatively, uh, extremely worse, and you'll see that in the later video. But it's important to build up and just cut. I use an exacto knife, you know, just cut these things and cut them down to where their their length matches the sides of your PVMs, tape them into place, and then also uh, cut them in half so that you have kind of two, you know, you split that right down the middle of that, that circle cylinder, and then you push them up against the side. I'll do the same thing on the front and the back, and I'll put some bracing along the sides, but that's going to just, again, add extra bracing to add to a thickness um, on the outside of this monitor because uh, at the end of the day, the outside of this monitor needs to have enough cushioning if something were to hit it. It needs to be soft slash hard. So there's that was the back. This is the, the front again uh, with all the additional um, foam from the pool noodles. And then I go again and wrap it in some more saran wrap because saran wrap is pretty cheap. You know, so again, I want to keep, I have to keep this within a 24 inch cube diameter because I'm using a specific box and it's about the biggest box you can buy. There is one box bigger, but this one works good and it's a double wall. You'll see it later, but I'm going to go again and just keep wrapping. And I know that, you know, this can look redundant and overkill. Some people will say, but this one, I'm, I'm located outside of Tennessee this one's going all the way to Seattle, Washington. So, I mean, I'm located inside Tennessee, outside of Nashville. And so that's a long trip, and especially for something that's 20 inches and quite as old as this one. This one, again, is from the early 90s. And uh, so it did sell on eBay, and it went for a great price. I think 380 was the finishing auction price on it, but that's... That's it for that outer foam layer. Now I want to show you some of my secret tips here to give it some extra protection. That is this Poly Pro foam insulation. And these come in big sheet boards. You get them from your uh, home improvement stores like Home Depot or Lowe's. And uh, the insulation is very thick. It's condensed foam, styrofoam. You can cut it up in pieces and add another great shell around the PVM that you've already got encased in the plastic wrap, then you can take sheets of this, you know, sections of this styrofoam and place it around there so that way you have this extra protection layer that's going to protect it from banging against anything inside the box again. And it may even save it if something bad were to happen, like it would have an impact inside the, the cart uh, along the way and have you know a, another box smash up against it, hopefully this foam will just add extra layers. So next step, this is very important. And this next time lapse is quite a lengthy video, but I wanted to just stop it for a second and show you what I've done really quickly before we get going into it. And that is, you'll notice that I put a piece of foam down here and it's all been wrapped up in one direction and that's around the front and back and the sides in its normal seated position. I just moved it from that seated position onto its face on top of that foam so that way I can wrap additional protection around the top and sides and bottom of the monitor, which I'm doing right now. I'll wrap that up and then I'll use those sections of that styrofoam insulation and start you know, getting those pieces sized up correctly and then we're going to tape them into place with some tape. And I'm going to get that on every one of these four sides here to begin with. Uh, now, it's going to be too big for me to most likely add additional protection at the front and back because that will put me at like 26 or 27 inches of foam. But around the sides and bottom, this is really going to help a lot. So again, tape it in place, use the saran wrap to go around, and then you've got it all wrapped up. And then I'm going to just keep on going. I'm going to put it back on its normal position on the bottom. And then I wrap it again with more saran wrap and even more bubble wrap. And then that's pretty much it. Now if it's, it's, it's like almost an entirely 24 inch cube of bubbled styrofoam and pool noodles combined up like this. And uh, 
then I'm going to put it in this nice fancy 24 inch cube uh, FedEx box and then uh, obviously I'm going to throw some more insulation in the bottom and then around the sides I'm going to use this old stuff that I've gotten you might have noticed these things that I'm going to use next I, I keep these when I get them shipped to me from other things um, and it's this this foam air foam things but this this box is specific and if you're going to risk it like I am which I, I know I know this might be bad but I am risking it and going with this single box on this packing and it but it is a dual layer box and it's rated to hold something that's over 100 pounds and this is about 75 pounds as is so that's what I'm taking is some extra high dense packing foam ripping it apart and I'll fill in the areas around the uh, PVM and the the specific spots between that and the box with that other stuff. There were some accessories going in the box. And then again, I'm going to cut up some probably pro insulation, fill that in on the top of the box, and then we'll get it kind of layered out and evened out and then tape it on up. And then that is it. Uh, now, before I did, there are some things here I want to show you I did before I just go ahead and start showing this real quick clip. I do add fragile stickers, arrows up, and then I'll double reinforce the corners with additional thick double wall cardboard that you'll see. Wrap it all in tape and saran wrap. So we're going to take a quick look around the box right now. And I'll pull myself out of the picture again so you can get a better picture of that. And that way, um, you know, I can't guarantee it's going to stay up, but it probably will considering the FedEx logos are like that. And you can see that extra nice packing on the corners. That does help. And then saran wrapping it. All that is just adding extra little bits of goodness. Droplets of goodness that are going to make this thing last and suffer this long trip it's got to go through all the way to Seattle to the West Coast and to its new home where it can be used as a professional video monitor for somebody else to enjoy some retro games on. But that is the way that I do it. It's the way I'd recommend it. And that's kind of the quickest way I could show you to do it properly. Now... Hang on, I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit here. That's it, okay? Uh, let's talk a second about the cost here on how much it's cost for that uh, kind of a packing, okay? That box. First off, the box is about $20. You're not getting around the cost of that box. And then the extra cardboard was recycled, so you can't really count that as a cost. It's the ones on the corners. Now, things that Elter cost is I did use an entire roll of that bubble wrap, $17, let's say, and then three uh, pool noodles, $3. So that's $20 more. So you got $20 and $20. I used $5 in packing tape, two rolls. I get four rolls for $10. So I used two rolls, and that's five more dollars. So you're at $45 for the box, the wrap, and the ship, and, and the tape. Then if you add in the cost, which was $15 for that insulation, that insulation entire big board was $15 more. So you're adding that into it and getting it up to $60. And then you have another dollar or two for things like the uh, saran wrap and maybe a couple incidental bits of foam. So, th I mean, think about that you got to price this stuff in if you're going to sell your monitor and know that it's going to take the right amount. Because you, $65, $70 is how much it cost me to pack this monitor. And that's why I had to charge 200 to ship it. Because honestly, to ship it from here all the way to the West Coast was right on $135. So you're looking right at, again, $200 uh, to ship something like this to do it properly and give it a good chance. And the good thing is, is... Uh, I take this to FedEx. They say it is approved from their location to ship. And I will tell you one other tip before I get into this unboxing. Sorry to keep teasing you. One more tip is you're going to ship those bigger packages. Now, I will ship 14-inch ones to residences. I don't normally like to do it to things that are like apartment complexes or gated communities. I don't like to ship it to those. So if you if you have anything else right now, you could still ship to like the nearest, uh, I use FedEx, so I like to ship to the nearest FedEx location. And I'm not talking about like Walgreens or something like that. I mean, an actual FedEx office print location. And most of the time, like this one is going to 
a location that is probably, I think it's point a quarter mile, uh, less than even a half a mile, a quarter mile from where this person lives. So now let's get into this, sorry, this finally, this unboxing of this Olympus OEV203. This is going to move fast, but I want to see what a horrific job this was packing. And uh, just blew me away. I mean, first off, the box was in like pieces. I emailed this person after I bought it from eBay again and asked them to take extra precaution to add a secondary box. I would have paid for it. They made a homemade, thankfully it was double wall, but it was a completely homemade box just pieced together of like five other big boxes that were just taped all together. And then it was completely covered in saran wrap. It didn't say up, down, or anything. So I'm going to continually pause this just to make sure I don't speed through it too fast. It was covered in a thick layer of bubble wrap and then the huge, nasty shipping and moving towel. Or not towel, what is that thing? It's a blanket. That's like the U-Haul special blanket. So somebody literally took and put this blanket here over next to me right in this area. I mean, and it, it, I, I'm, it smelled awful. I threw it away right after I took it off. It was disgusting. What a nightmare. Somebody would put it. Anyway, I was kind of thankful for the blanket, though, because it did save the monitor. They put cardboard on the front, which is a waste. It doesn't really help if you don't put any padding on it. So anyway, it just had one piece of cardboard, the blanket, and I mean one layer of bubble wrap. So there's an example of somebody that packed a monitor and shipped it to me, and they literally spent probably $10 at the max, maybe not even $10. But they might have spent $8.00 in materials and recycled most of that stuff and uh you know the blanket and everything and so this is the exact opposite of what i just showed you and it's just a miracle that this thing still showed up it would even work uh, i'm not gonna you know, spoil it here for you but it did turn on it did get some damage to it which i'll show you in a second but Again, you're always taking this risk, even if you try to get, this was from a large recycler. And any time you try to get these guys to sell you something, uh, you're always taking a risk of them underestimating shipping it because they don't care. They're just trying to sell it and they got, you know, no money in it. And so a couple hundred bucks, they make it or they don't. If it breaks, they call it a shipping claim or they just lose the money and return it to you. So this was the damage. Of course, it's one of these plastic pieces I mentioned to you earlier on the, the 1943 packing job where those were removable quite easily. They're not removable that easily on this. You have to take the whole bezel apart to get them out. So I haven't decided yet if it's, if it's a clean snap and it doesn't look bad, I might just epoxy it back together. And then there was one more thing I wanted to show you. This is a trick to get this remote light off. So if you have a PVM and you see this little orange remote light, on here, I'm going to show you the procedure in your menu. So pull up your regular menu, just the regular menu by pressing the menu button. Go down to preset, and it's probably turned on. Just turn it off, and that will turn off that little orange tally light at the bottom right hand of your screen. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I was super fortunate. I didn't really want this one to be busted because I got a good deal on it because it was barely tested from eBay, and they didn't know how to turn that light off. And again, it was just a recycler. Um, and uh, but this is, you know, don't don't let it risk that because I know that, for example, if this one would have been damaged, there's no way, there's absolutely zero chance that anybody, any shipping company, would have paid the claim for the damage and the loss on there. Now eBay would have covered me, but the other, you know eBay would have covered me, but the guy who sold it and shipped it and packed it so terribly would have not been covered. Now, there is something else we need to bring up here. And this is kind of a teaser for the next episode of Retrotech's Market Watch. So if you've managed to stay all the way to this point and hang out with me uh, talking about for nearly 20 minutes about packing, uh, let's get into this little secret while I got this thing. We found our good old friend, The Only Shop. And if you know who the only shop is, you've seen it in my videos before about how the only shop used to sell PVMs and BVMs on eBay. And you do you look at any of the old market watch programs that I made. Most of them include a lot of sales from him. But back in, oh, I don't know, 
January and February. After about February, he just disappeared from eBay. Never had all his listings gone, and that was it. Well, we found him. He's on Etsy. And um, so I'm going to go into detail, show his listings, talk about the problems with that, still go through some of the things on eBay on the next episode. Thanks again for watching this episode today. Um, and, you know, hang in there. Life will be as good as we can make it personally for ourselves right now. And uh, just remember to try. If you're feeling bad um, and down, I've found recently that it is very true that if you can get out and uh, do something else, somehow be a blessing to somebody else and do something to help somebody else, it kind of gets you all focused off your own mind for a little while and um, gives you an opportunity to kind of, you know, feel good about things and remember there's not so much doom and gloom all the time. And uh, that's a bit for today, though. Thanks again for watching, everybody. I really appreciate every Patreon and supporter of this channel. And I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.